There appears to be a bit of a theme emerging in that I always seem to be on nights when I make these videos. But as the parent of two young children at home, I've actually been volunteering to do on-call shifts at one of London's busiest hospitals. It's the only way I get any rest. But time is short, so I'll get straight to the point. Here's the human body. Isn't it amazing? No, it's idiotic. You're idiotic. Specifically, this nerve. Not this nerve, that one's fine. Not this nerve, that one's amazing. But this nerve, the recurrent laryngeal nerve. It's battier than a backwards retina. Let me tell you why. I don't know when the next call's coming in, so I've chosen a topic that I could do off the cuff because it's a favorite with evolutionary biologists. In a previous video, we saw how evolution has clumsily left remnants in your DNA, but you don't even need a microscope to be able to spot pointless leftovers in the human body. Yes, I know you don't use a microscope to look at genes. It was like a metaphor. Here is the tongue. Here is the pharynx. Open it up. And here is the larynx. Here is a nerve that allows you to speak. The evidence for a designer is incredibly weak. Part of the larynx is innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve, which comes off the vagus and goes to the larynx in a fairly straightforward common sense route. But the other part of the larynx is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. On the left, look at the route it takes. It goes all the way down into the chest, loops under the arch of the aorta, and then back to the larynx. On the right side, it goes underneath the right subclavian. In both cases, it takes a far longer route than is necessary. To borrow an engineering technical term here, I believe this could be described as whack. So was this a one-off cock up with humans? Definitely not. Every tetrapod has the exact same moronic setup, including NBA camels, also known as giraffes, whose recurrent laryngeal gives a whole new meaning to the expression taking the long way round. So how did we end up with this fresh nonsense? Well, to answer that, we need to go back, way back, back to when our brains were kind of on our back. Because at this point in our history, we look like some kind of fish. Our primitive ancestor, who may or may not have tasted fantastic with batter and chips, didn't have a larynx, but they did have the precursor, that an organ that would evolve into the larynx, namely the gills. This is the international symbol for gills, in case you didn't know. A set of aortic arches, or blood vessels, spanned across the gills and connected up to the heart. From their tiny brain, a nerve also went in the most direct route to the heart, which passed the gills. But as life became more complex over the subsequent millions of years, body shapes changed. Animals started having necks, moving their brains further away from the heart. Instead of plotting a new route to the larynx, the recurrent laryngeal was stuck behind the embryonic vessel that would become our aortic arch, taking this manic loop instead of a much shorter direct route. I always thought there was something fishy about you, and now I know I was right. When you were one month old, one month from conception that is, you kind of looked a bit like a primitive fish. Just like a fish, you had a set of aortic arches instead of a single aortic arch that a term baby has. You also had no neck, but you did have nerves, including a recurrent laryngeal nerve, which started its life taking a fairly sensible route before it was yanked down but with the heart into the chest as you developed from a little blob into a baby. Taken to its extreme, this deviation achieves frankly comical levels. Matthew Waddell wrote a fantastic paper poking fun at the tendency to trot out the giraffe as an example. With its two and a half meter neck, it's got a uh, recurrent laryngeal of about five meters in length. That's nothing, Waddell says, in comparison to the sauropod, whose dimensions truly were next level. The larger sauropods had about 14 meters between their brain and their heart. And as we know that sauropods all had larynges, we can conclude that their recurrent laryngeal nerves must have been about 28 meters in length. And the vast majority of that was just an accident of evolution. For a final bonus fact, so I'd remember that nerves are made up of extremely long cells that run their entire length. So the axons, the nerve fibers in the recurrent laryngeal nerve or a sauropod would be about the same length as the cells in a blue whale's dorsal root ganglion making them possibly the longest cells 
in the history of the world. At VidCon last week, we were told to put a subscribe message in our videos, so um, you better, we were told maybe we could offer incentives um, to our subscribers. Now, I don't have a Patreon, uh, but if I did, the top tier would be rewarded with a one-hour video of me wearing my special super indoor radiation-proof non-sunglasses, which are literally made with lead. They're very heavy and they protect my eyes uh, from x-rays so I don't get cataracts and also help me beat Superman uh, in a staring competition.